In this video I'm sharing a few quick tips for troubleshooting fiber optic connections on Cisco switches. On my desk here I have two older model Cisco 2960 switches with the SFP ports and they're connected by a strand of multi-mode fiber. None of the tips that I have to share here are really highly complex, but it was knowledge that I had to acquire while troubleshooting outages, so it was very hard earned. So all I want to do is kind of share this out on the internet so that it will maybe save another network admin some headache whenever they have to troubleshoot one of these issues. The first thing that I want to share really isn't a command or something you can run, it's just a general piece of advice for working with fiber. Whenever you're bringing up a new link, I find that it's best to clean the connectors on the LIU side as well as on the fiber patch cord that you're plugging in. Even if it's brand new fiber fresh out of the bag, it can still sometimes come just dirty enough to cause either the link to not come up or to come up but to have interface errors. As for what to clean the fiber with, we've had pretty good luck with these Fuji Curl one-click cleaners. These have a little piece of thread inside so that whenever you put them on the end of the fiber connectors and click them down, the end rotates as it pulls new thread through, and these actually do a pretty good job of cleaning the tips. And a little known side bonus is that having some of these around will actually make you really popular at parties. Save your wrist, no more twist. One more tip that I want to share is that it's really helpful if you can get your hands on a digital fiber scope. You can use these to actually inspect the ends of the fiber and take some of the guesswork out of determining if they're dirty or not. I'm sure that there's more than one vendor who makes these, but one that I've used and have had a good experience with is made by AFL. I think these run about $1,300 new, so it's definitely something you'd want to try to have your company pay for. And you can use this with the full-blown OTDR kit, which is the very expensive option, or you can just purchase the USB fiber scope and then connect it to a laptop running Windows and run the application inside of there. And this also comes with a wireless option where you install the app on your phone and use that screen to inspect the fiber. And this basically works exactly like what's shown in the picture. You insert the fiber into the end of the fiber scope and the image is blown up and displayed on your screen so that you can see if the tip is clean or not. I'll put a link in the comments to a video from another channel that goes more in depth on inspecting the tips of fiber using the digital fiber scope. The last thing I want to share are some helpful commands that you can run on switches to troubleshoot fiber. So I'm logged into my switch here and the first command I want to share is the show interfaces command. You can see on the front of the switches here that I'm using gig 0 slash 2 for their fiber interfaces. So I'm just going to add gi 0 slash 2 to the command and then hit enter. And this command has a lot of output but I find that the most helpful counters are the input errors, CRC, and frame. All of these counters should ideally always stay zero and if the numbers are increasing it can indicate a problem at the physical layer. So most likely either a piece of fiber that's dirty or poorly terminated or an SFP that is dirty or failing. The second command I want to share is the show interface transceiver command. So it's exactly the same as the show interfaces command except for we add transceiver at the end and then hit enter. Now this command will only have output if your module supports a feature what's called digital optical monitoring. For whatever reason this feature is not supported on all part numbers of fiber optic modules which is kind of annoying so you just have to make sure that the part numbers that you're buying support digital optical monitoring. If you're buying Cisco branded modules they have a compatibility matrix that shows which modules support this feature and which do not. I'll leave a link to that in the description. Now as for the output of this command it gives you the temperature, voltage, optical transmit power, and optical receive power. The output I use the most is the optical receive power, since this is measuring how much signal is actually getting through from the other side of the connection. And since it's measuring loss, it's represented using negative values. And you want this number to be as low as possible, with less loss being close to zero, and really high loss being close to negative 40. Whenever I'm troubleshooting a fiber connection or bringing a new one online, I always like to try to check these numbers on both switches. So on switch one here, you can see it's negative 5.6. Now if I go to switch two and say, the exact same command, show interfaces, gig 0 slash 2 transceiver. You can see that this switch is actually also receiving at negative 5.6. And you can actually view the thresholds that the switch considers acceptable levels for these numbers if you just add detail to the end of the command and then hit enter. So there's a little bit more output to this command. If we go down to our optical receive power levels here, again you see it's negative 5.6 dBm. But now the switch gives us the acceptable thresholds over to the right here. We can see that the switch will be unhappy if the connection comes in at 0.0, .0 because it's too high, whereas the switch starts to become unhappy if the signal is too weak at negative 17.0 dBm, and if the signal drops even lower to negative 21 dBm, then it becomes even more unhappy. So if it's a negative 5.6, it's still within that acceptable range. So that's it for this video. I just wanted to share these couple tips for troubleshooting fiber with Cisco switches. Hit the like button if this was helpful, and thanks for viewing.